Hello, what we have here today for the first video of KTE is this old Sony DVD player I picked up at the Goodwill for $10. This thing has all the controllers on the front, literally all of them. You can access all the menus and everything you can need to access without the need of a remote. It even has a real power button. On the back, <clears throat> We have your digital audio out, your standard RCA out, S video, and composite. So it's not badly equipped for what it is. The thing debuts, and I believe from 2006, if so I can find a date code on it somewhere. Go find a date code real quick. Well, I couldn't find a date code on it, but here's the model number DVP NS300. Takes 12 watts, runs at 120 volts. Although this thing probably has a switch my power supply, so I'm sure it would be happy on 242. Anyways, yeah, it's a older Sony DVD player. Go ahead and power it up. Stand by. Uh. This thing has a problem. It's just fact is why I got it because it has a problem. It will play a movie. In fact, there's a movie in there as you can see it's playing. But after usually a few seconds to a few minutes, the thing will randomly power cycle and restart. At least it's doing that at the Goodwill store. It may be it may be behaving now because it's on camera. Push the play. We'll see if we can get it to misbehave on camera. It might be trying to make a liar of me. It's going to behave now because it's... Because it's being watched on camera. Yeah. Looks like it's going to behave now. But anyways, what I was doing earlier is after playing for between a few seconds to a few minutes, it would just randomly restart. Like, power cycle. It actually does have support for surround sound. I'm not sure what B and R is. This thing came to CD video, so you could put your karaoke discs in here if you wanted. CD video was never a really big was never really a big thing in the North American market. That was more in the Asian market. But anyways, yes, it looks like the Sony is gonna in fact behave itself this time. But nevertheless, that won't stop me from using my trusty Hitachi and popping the top off and getting a good old look inside. Uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and shut it off. We'll press the stop button. Got my test CD of Iron Eagle. Because my eagles are made of iron. Mm. Okay, shut it off. Be right back with you when I have it open. Mmm, delicious. Crusty bitch all in it. Anyway, if we get the top off, let's see what's inside this bad boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a couple of things in here I see. We have a power supply with a real power switch, which is kind of surprising see any bulging capacitors, but anyone who's worked on Sony equipment long enough knows that you don't necessarily need bulging capacitors for them to be bad, especially in Sony equipment. We have our transport in the middle. Over here is our main logic board. It's actually rather small. And after that we have our I.O. board at the back. Then at the front we have ourselves the front panel controls. This little ribbon cable here for the four buttons. Everything else just has little rods that connect down. This is pretty typical construction for Sony. 
where they'll have a main board along the bottom for their front panel, their VFD display. A lot of your other computers had a separate front panel board. Anyways, it looks like over here is also part of the front panel board. Back down there, you can see a transformer for the VFD display. There's also an LED over there. I like this mechanism right here. Yeah, this thing doesn't even necessarily have a control chip for the power supply. It's using what looks like an A stable oscillator for it. Anyways, yeah. Got a couple chips down here. I'm guessing the servo driver is on the bottom. Got two flat pack Sony ICs. Looking play. You see the mechanism spin up. Rather interesting to get power to the main board. You got a power cable over here that goes around to the I.O. board. <laughs> Good how they're bringing the power over to the main board. Oh, looks like this thing is going to behave for us. It's not going to try to do anything funny. Hopefully when my, when my ESR meter comes in soon, we'll go ahead and we'll take these capacitors off and we'll test them to make sure they're working properly, that they're worth intolerance. Like I said earlier, the thing would randomly power cycle after playing for a little bit. This also does have those notorious leaky SMD capacitors that everybody hates. On a first glance, everything here seems to check out. I don't even see so much as a hot spot in this thing. This thing must be rather low hour. There's just no discoloration, no hot spots, nothing like that. Also, rather interestingly, you can see where the traces are. And you can also see like where SMD parts were melted. Yeah, see our output mux right there, the flutter pads for it at least. See a couple op amps here and there. But anyways, yeah, looks like she's going to behave this time. I'll uh, conclude the video for now. And next time we'll look at something else. Hopefully this other thing will actually be broken and not just pretending to be broken.